Hello, singers, and welcome to Voice Masters live stream, where I ask the world's leading voice experts, what does every singer need to know? I'm very excited to be here with you today. Also, to welcome a good friend of mine and colleague from Israel, Aramat Anheim Sharon. I'm very, Hello. very happy that she's going to be joining us today. Uh, she is extremely knowledgeable, extremely knowledgeable, and is extremely generous in her, her sincere desire to share information with singers everywhere. I'd like to welcome all of you who are joining us live on YouTube and welcome everyone who is joining us in the private Zoom meeting where we are going to raffle off one month free access to my course Airflow Control today. There's a lot of misunderstandings about breathing technique support out there, so I made this course to help singers understand how it works. It's not that complicated, but it is the key to controlling all of your singing. <laughs> so it's very, very important you understand this, and that's why today we will be raffling off course. If you'd like to join us live in the Zoom meeting sometime, all you have to do is go to singingrevealed.com and sign up. Just join our members list and I will send you the personal invitation. You'll see also follow us on Singing Revealed here on YouTube and subscribe so you'll get notified when we go live. Also follow us on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook if you like as well and then you will get all the information about all these private invitations to join us live in the Zoom meeting where you can win one month free access to one of my courses. So, I think we've got all the publicity out of the way, right? <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, Aramat has, uh, you need to just visit her website and read her about page. She is extremely qualified. She is a singer, a teacher, a coach, and has very, very innovative. And I'm very thrilled to have her on with me. So, without further ado, welcome. Ahamat to Voice Masters uh, live stream. Thank you so much. It's always an honor to be here and it's always a joy to be with you, Philip. So thank you so much for that nice introduction. I'm really excited. And I'm really excited to share my perspective on what uh, all singers should know because there's so much they did you know all of us need to know and <laughs> but Right. It off. sounds it sounds like a tricky question, but let me yeah. Um, let me just, if, you, if you're tuning in, you're live in the chat, the Zoom reading, if you give us some audio feedback, just I want to make sure that Aramat and I are on the same volume level. So if you think I need to be louder or Aramat needs to be louder, just pop that in the chat. We'll adjust our volume. I think you could be a little bit louder, personally. Me? Oh, yeah, yeah I, can, I can. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, just. You know, like, like in singing, baby steps are more important than big steps. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody's saying it's good. It's good. good. Yes. Good. Um, I, I just asked this question because when I was thinking about what do I want to share with singers and thinking about all of the things I wish I had have known when I started, you know, that could have got me to my goal and allowed me to be at the like the apex or the pinnacle of my career, maybe for for longer, you know, and I had a great career. I can't no complaints there, but it was a lot of work. So I really thought about that, and there are a lot of things that singers need to know, but I think I want to communicate that it's often what you need to know right now, right? So that's why every co-host that comes on this show might have a little bit of a different angle for you, and that's great. So you can learn all kinds of different things, and that's what we want to highlight, a couple of important things. So just yeah. remember, whether it's here on Voice Masters live stream, or you're taking one of my courses, or you're in private coaching, sometimes all you need is one piece of information that unlocks an entire world for you to explore. And that's what we're all about, sharing knowledge across borders and methodologies to help change the world one voice at a time. Yes. Um, so <laughs> tell us a little bit, uh, our audience, for not everybody in the world knows you, or me even, you know, uh, surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> But tell us a little bit about who who is Ahamatz? Why did you oh, start okay. singing? Where did you sing? Have you always been <laughs> singing? Were you always an amazing singer? Um, oh, no. How did, how did you start out? Well, um, you know what? I'll share with you and it will get right, right to the point where I wanted to start with because the main thing I want to talk about today is nasal resonance. But before that, um, I wanted to share something that I feel like 
all singers need to feel <laughs> and I only know um, so my background does start like the you know all the normal stories I started singing really young I loved it really young I have um, both of my parents come from classical um, music and um, so you know I had that influence in my house and uh, I seem to have a good grip of it when I was young I even uh, like in elementary school was singing uh, like a main opera part in in something that we did in the community so it was like it was going there um, but then I feel like I know I went to this really serious and professional choir and we did contests throughout the world which was really developing but also really scary <laughs> scary in a sense that you know it was really old school sometimes and it was um, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it old school, but it's a rough discipline and it's a lot of work. And for a child that just wants to experience to be how it is to be a child, not just be like, oh my God, terrified, I need to get this part right and I need to be there on time. And you know, and you're all alone when you're 11 years old traveling to places without, you know, your family and, and doing contests, it was a lot. So at that point, I just kind of left everything. Um, and then, um, and then I, I just went to other, and other, other forms of art. <laughs> I couldn't get away <laughs> from art, but I told myself that I'm not going to be a musician like my parents. That was like something I just put out there, which was, you know, turned out to be completely <laughs> not true but um but that was my feeling then and when i came back to singing when i realized that's what i want to do i came back and i did like college college and university and i did some music but my voice was a mess because all of a sudden i wanted to do not the classical sound i wanted to do the r b and i wanted to do the rock and and you know and i would just and soul and i started doing some stuff that i thought was what people were looking for in their <laughs> and how our singers would do that i would just try to mimic them and i went all wrong about it and uh, the techniques i was learning at the time was not helping me i ended up sounding like a teenage boy basically uh, when i was like 20 years old just like saying well hello philip how are you <laughs> in my speaking voice <laughs> so my voice my voice was completely messed up um and it started getting better but it was a struggle and i think that struggle was a good like today i can say that it was a good moment um a good struggle that led me to a lot of uh, desire to learn more and to dig deeper um and i wanted to help a lot of you know young singers as well who are experiencing you know either the the terror of needing to be perfect or <laughs> or the lack of ability to find their voice because something went wrong and i felt like i wasn't getting enough answers so I was looking more and more, um, and then I found different techniques. Uh, one of them was speech level singing, which I was like doing for six or seven years, and I moved to other techniques, and then I started taking more courses and, and doing some ASTIL and doing some other stuff, and then I realized I want to know more, and so I ended up learning physics um, and science and stuff just to figure out how the voice works, because I wanted to have all the answers in the world. Um, only to learn that we don't know enough about voice, but um, but it's really good to have that science and, and all the different techniques because the main thing I've learned from all of this experience is that I don't ever want to be biased to one technique or one way, you know, because our voice and our body is so dynamic and we change constantly and we need to fit into different molds and parts and 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 you know whatever we we just need to fit the mood that we wake up in the morning or the different hormones that, <laughs> that <laughs> attack us in a certain situation well, and thank you for sharing that because i think it's really important um to hear for a lot of people 
I, I know there are singers out there that might be just at that spot where, you know, they feel like everything is just not working. And, and I literally had a client not even a year ago was exactly like that, sounding like a 12-year-old boy. Hi, my, her voice would not work, you know. And just so you know, if it's not the end of your journey, this, this client of mine now in just, uh, it's been a couple months, but she now less than a year from going from that, she got accepted to a Bachelor of Fine Arts voice performance program. She had to audition and, and got accepted and is gonna be doing that. And, and a, not even a year ago, she couldn't speak straight without her voice cracking. So there are solutions and we're lucky because because all of this drove you and inspired you to go on your personal research journey and come back and share a wealth of knowledge with us. And I'm grateful yes. for that. I always learn from you. You're, you're, oh. you're wonderfully amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I've always, as, as I said, I'm, just, I'm always learning from you and I always have so much pleasure when I'm with you and talking to you and I feel like, you know, there, there's still so much to share and so much uh, and so much love to share as well. Um, well let me, but yeah, let me share something with you because you also mentioned hormones, right? And <laughs> okay, I'm I'm obviously a man, right? It, I don't have the same hormones, but I have a I really understood for the first time what what female singers go through sometimes on a month, you know, a monthly basis, right? You have your whole hormones change because I had I had this. It's called a bursitis. Some, something was wrong with my hip. I was literally maybe 10 days ago crawling. I could not walk. I was in so much pain. And they, it was just a tendonitis. Something got inflamed. So they put me on steroids and that thankfully worked. But oh my gosh, it totally impacted my voice. Like I was, it was felt like, oh, it was really strange. And I'm like, oh, dang, this is what all my female colleagues have to have been working with every month you know maybe yeah. not the exact same thing but but the 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 hormones like you said in your body have an impact on your voice and we don't wake up to the same voice every day so that is really the the core essence of why vocal techniques so important is because it will allow you to manage those different kinds of situations and and you might not have your best day but you'll you'll still have a good day <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. And I and I want to tell everyone, I mean, that's really the point I wanted to start with today is, you know, I'm at a place today where, where I'm, if I'm struggling with my voice because whatever, you know, I had COVID and it took time for my voice to recover. And it took me a while to figure out it's not even COVID anymore. It's because I was eating dinner at 10 p.m. And I had reflux all over, you know, <laughs> so, so that's also something you always need to learn yourself and try to understand why is it that when you wake up in the morning, you sound like a frog again um, and just try to try to fix that. But but then, you know, when I was taking my own lessons right now and, you know, you always need to keep on taking lessons no matter what you do and how many years you're teaching. I feel like every once in a while you really need to have lessons. And so. My teacher was like, you know, I'm, I think it's going to be okay. And then I told him, you know what? I, I know it's going to be okay. Like, I'm not worried about it. Whereas if you look at me 15 years ago or 20 years ago, if I had that experience with my voice, I'll be devastated. I'll be feeling like it's the end of the world. Um, and today, if I wake up with a frog voice, I'll be like, you know what? Let's explore. Let's see what my frog voice will create today because then I'll get a different sound. Maybe it will be even cooler than my normal <laughs> sound, you know? And I feel like that's, that's something that singers need to constantly feel and, and, and reassure their, their hearts and their faith in their voice because your voice can do so many things and it might sound differently each day. And it is a journey of finding the right technique and the right... Um, tools that will give you that core but but at the same time even though you want to find that something to lean on which is always helpful it's helpful for me as well you should also be really free to explore your voice and and say you know what this approach is not working for me right now 
let me try something else. And it's okay, you know, it's totally okay. And that's where you're really, really free. And when you're singing in front of the audience or when you're seeing a singer, you know, when you go to see a show, how fun is that when you see the singer just like going into their space and, and, and world and, and, and zone and inspire you because they're free to do what they feel like is right, even if it's not, you know, even if it, it wasn't the perfect pitch or it wasn't the perfect sound, sometimes the vulnerability is so touching, but because they're allowing themselves to be that way and how how sad it is when you see someone kind of just like struggling on stage, you know, instead of like, is that really what you want to do? Don't you want to just like embrace that moment? And I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm just saying it's something we need to remind ourselves to always do and inspire yes. to do. Thank you for that. Yeah, there's too much pressure. We have, you know, it's, it's the world we live in. Everything on social media is perfect, you know. Everybody's perfect and everybody sounds perfect and everybody sounds amazing, but um, no, it's, uh, it's produced, right? Yeah, you can get to a very high success rate the more you know, proficient you get with your technique, but everybody is not perfect and especially as singers, you know, the goal is technique, actually the purpose of technique, and I'm just going to say this right now, is, is it serves to free us for expression to free our voice for expression so we can express ourselves better, to communicate better. And, you know, that's my, I'm not going to, you know, do much, too much promotion here, but that's why I have a course called Emotional Layering. And I know you've, you've seen the course, you've looked at the course, but it's, it is, it's the only course in the world that I even know about. And I've tried to look, you know, I should have looked before I brought it out, but I brought it out and then I'm like, oh my gosh, there's no other course in the world that is just designed to help, te help singers communicate emotionally and authentically. And that is the most important thing. Because yeah. if we're doing that, people do not care about the imperfections because they're connected with us and our message. And then the slight imperfection actually becomes style. It yeah. actually becomes expression and people embrace it. So it's not about being perfect, right? Although, you know, that's what we're, that's kind of our goal, yeah. continuous progression, that we're trying to do this technically perfect. Um, you know, uh, you know, Kaya, a uh, colleague of ours, she, she likes to say, you know, ma become a master of technique or the rules so you can bend the rules as an artist or break them yes. as an artist. So, but it's only possible, I had this discussion just the other day with a client. He's like, I've always been trying to go for the little things that are kind of the bend or the breaking of the rules. I'm like, yes, but you, you have to learn to walk on the balance beam before you can do a double backflip with a full twist on a balance beam. You know, yeah. if, if you can walk on it, then you can do some, you can bend some rules. But um, yeah, I guess we're just trying to say, look, your journey is your journey and your journey is personal and you don't have to aspire to be perfect, right? That's not the goal. The goal is to express yourself through music and yeah. enjoy it. Exactly. And when you learn to do that, and even what you said, your course about connecting to the emotions and delivering the message, the, I think the big deal here and the main thing is that you're connecting to yourself in that process. So just remember that whatever technique you're learning, it's really important that you're on that journey, because if we have more tools, just like Kaya said, if we're controlling our voice better, then we feel we feel more confident because we know we have things to rely on and that's really important but in that process isn't it so much more fun to learn and develop while we have that faith in our voice and while we have fun and while we connect to our body rather than saying oh shoot I did that again I suck you know <laughs> it's just like tell yourself yeah, that went really well. That wasn't okay. I'll fix that. That's fine. Oh, we'll figure a way, you know, let's yeah. look for another way. Yeah. And just, I think it's comforting. Maybe I mean, it's comforting for me to hear this. I know a lot of people will look at, at me or you or some other people and think, Oh, they're so amazing. They're so amazing. You know, the truth is I fail every day. I fail every day. I'm teaching every day and not every demonstration I give to a student is perfect. And sometimes they copy the thing that I did wrong perfectly. 
<laughs> and then I'm like, no, no, you. That, I congratulate them. Like that was so good. You did everything exactly like I did, including my mistake. Now let me give you a better example. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. we we are in. We are all um, infallible. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. And I just want to say for to comfort maybe some singers. You might be really frustrated right now, and and. Just know your voice is built to work. It is built to work and you can get there. There's, we have so many stories of people that could not keep a straight tone even for one sentence and then a, a year later they are singing beautifully and it's, it's life changing. So when I say life changing results, I'm serious. It will change your life because you're going to feel better about yourself and then your energy around everybody around you, it's going to improve everything about your life. So let's, yeah. um, let's dive into a really uh, controversial topic, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is this nasal resonance, and I'm excited to, because we, when we had our conversation, you told me you've been you've been digging into this deeper, and I I remember um, when I was first starting my opera journey after being a musical star for I don't know decades, uh, a decade, then they they the guys they just they would be in the in the backstage in the cafeteria say. Okay, God, go put it in the nose, put it in the nose. And I'm like, why would you ever want to put it in the nose? If I put it in the nose, my voice does not work at all. What are they talking about? You know, and then other teachers saying, oh, no, that's nasal. Nasal's bad. Nasal's bad. Get, get rid of the nasality. I'm like, oh, and then other people saying, close the nasal passage, open the nasal passage. You know, it, it, it can be one of those things where uh, people are very divided and a bit confused about it. But I can say that I've had a lot of success um, with my clients and or let's put it the other way around. My clients have had a lot of success when they discover that there is part of uh, the nasality, if you will, mm -hmm. that is not nasality. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, what, what does that mean? So mm -hmm. let's let's talk about it. Tell us what have you discovered about nasal resonance and how can and why does every singer need to know this? How can it okay. help us? OK, I'm excited. OK, so. I have to start with disclaimers first because, um, because as you said, you know, that's very controversial. Um, and what is nasal resonance? Like, is, is it a thing? You know, because the, reson the main resonator of our voice is not the nasal cavities. And that has been shown in, in studies. They, they've done studies where you've put like a, whatever cotton in, in, people's, in, in people's nostrils and they were still capable of singing. <laughs> and most m most of the sound was you know in the throat and mouth that's where most of the action happens so generally it's not like you have to have that resonance in your singing in order to be successful right um so so that's where it's been really controversial and the other thing is that when you go really nasal with your sound so for example if you're doing an angie mm, then that's the most nasal sound you're ever going to get. And, and people at home, if they're watching us, you can try it. You can do an Angie mm, and then try to plug your nose and then the sound will stop coming out because it's not coming out into your mouth. It's coming out into your nose. Um, it's a completely nasal sound, 100%, what we call hyper nasal sound, being that, you know, it's completely resonating in your nose. Um, and so, yeah, when you plug your nose, it just, you won't, you won't hear anything because there is no outlet. <laughs> um, so the thing is, there is, there are sounds that we use as singers that are nasal. Being NG is one of them. And every time we do something like an M or an N, any sound that closes our mouth completely is also a nasal consonant or a nasal sound, you know, because then, um, the sound cannot come out of your mouth, so it comes out of your nose. Um, and that's a nasal consonant. So the thing is, as singers, we are taught to avoid that. You know, we are taught to avoid it because we don't want to sound nasal all the time. That's not, that's not a good thing, right? Um, it's not a healthy thing as well for like speech therapists and stuff like that. If they hear that, then they assume that something is happening in the nasal passage. And the nasal passage is in the back of our throat. So when you think about that, uh, the ceiling of our mouth, which is called the palate, you have the hard palate in the beginning, yeah? 
Can I raise my hand? <laughs> yes. I, I would love to share a graphic. This is one of my favorite graphics. Um, oh, sure. And, yeah. And it will, when, while you're talking about this. So I'll continue talking and you'll show the graph. <laughs> yes. And this is right a graphic now I, of the yeah. pharynx. Yes. Perfect. So you see now what you're seeing is the pharyngeal opening, what you're seeing there. Yeah, that's where like the nasal passage is. And then you see the soft palate. Um, so the soft palate is the when the ceiling of your mouth, just the back end of the ceiling of your mouth, basically. That little part. So that little part is truly amazing because that little part is able to go up, lift and completely close the entrance of sound or air to your nose. So that thing really moves, you know, it's a really exciting thing to learn <laughs> that the soft palate is a completely is completely alive. It has muscles and it can move up and close the passage to your nose and it can do go down um, and just relax and allow the passage to your nose. So sometimes when the soft palate is really, really lazy. And that's why you got that, you know, sound that's really, really nasal because it just it just stays there and allows all the air or, or most of it to go into your nasal passages. Um, so when you're doing an NG, mm, it's similar. But when you're letting go of that connection of the NG at the back of the like tongue and soft palate, it still can sound really hypernasal between the mm, uh, uh, and I can test that, you know, I can test that with my fingers. I can put my fingers on my nose and then you'll hear that it's really, really nasal because when I touch my nose, um, so I go, mm -hmm. everything I touch or twist makes it sound a little different because, because the, the sound is there. So if I'm changing the, the, the nasal cavities and I'm changing the resonance, you know, so that's what's happening. So, so we can definitely say there is such a thing as a nasal resonance because obviously we're using it especially when we're doing an NG, partially and, you know, even more than partially when we're doing an M or an N, so it's there. Um, and we know that it can be overused. There is no argument there. <laughs> but and anything can be overused. <laughs> so, um, so what we want to do is figure out how much singers use that in their voice. Um, so there has been studies by the amazing... Um, Brian Gill and, and Johann Sundberg um, that have been doing studies on nasal resonance, checking for air escaping from the nostrils to figure out how much singers actually use that, you know, use that part of their, vo um, their voice when they're voicing or creating like a higher pitch. How is that? How is that happening? How much is that happening? Um, so they noticed that actually professional singers go into higher notes or maybe even through the passaggios because of um, acoustic, you know, resonances that happen there, that it's actually more helpful. Now, I want to I want to talk about why is that helpful, because I don't want to just talk about numbers and say, you know, there's a there's this resonance and that resonance and all that, blah, blah, blah. I want to just talk about it in, in the most, you know, fun way we can. Um, um, so, yeah, the, the research was, um, oh, written, yeah, I can write that to you later, but I think you can write it as well. <laughs> um, so, um, so that was for that question. But the thing is, um, when we look at, uh, at the nasal resonance, you can almost look at it like there's another resonance that's all of a sudden appearing like acoustically so we call that like a it's almost like a doubling you know a coupling that's what we say like scientifically there's a coupling of the of the vocal tract of the throat and mouth resonance that couples with the nasal resonance like that's the the, the main concept and what's interesting is if you look at graphs you can see that the regular resonance does things. And then when you add some more nasal qualities and allow your soft palate to drop a little and allow the sound to come through your nose, you all of a sudden see more energy in other places. So in a sense, you get more 
energy just because you're using your nose. But if you use it too much, then it starts to kind of muffle everything. Everything sounds like a murmur, and then you lose a lot of the energy that you had in the beginning in your mouth and throat. So the main point of all of that and what um, Johann Sundberg and Brian Gill were showing is that if you use just a little bit of nasality, you actually get more resonance in certain places in your voice. You benefit. But if you use too much of it, then you just kind of diminish the resonance that you had originally. So that's the first thing to understand. And that kind of took me to, um, to another place. <laughs> that took me to kind of think about, okay, everyone's talking about how much air is going through. Everyone is talking about uh, the, that passage. The velopharyngeal port is how we refer to it. And everyone's talking about, is it really lower? How much it lowered? Yeah, that soft palate, that's the velopharyngeal port behind it. So everyone's talking about how much space has opened up in there, you know? Is it just a little space? Is it a bigger space? And we, we seem to always think about how much sound is getting in. But no one's thinking about how much sound is getting out and can we control the outlet? Okay, so that's where my study with Brad's story came in. Um, and we didn't pl publish it as a paper, we did present it in, um, um, in the Voice Foundation Symposium, um, um, I think it was last year or two years ago, I don't know. <laughs> I think it was last year. Um, yeah, I think it was the last one. Um, so it was really, really exciting. And we just, um, the, the cool thing about Brad is that he does a lot of um, computer simula si simulations of, um, of, you know, of voicing. And, 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 and he can just do whatever I wanted to do in a computer. So it's not bias anymore. <laughs> it's yeah, not like, you know. I think that's really cool because, okay, people often wonder, okay, what, how do you simulate the voice in a computer, right? But yeah. It, it's basically you just you create a model of the vocal tract yeah. and then depending on you know position of the tongue and the shape of the vocal tract it puts out uh, the frequency spectrum just yeah. like a vocal sound and and that's I think really important for singers to understand that that a small change on the inside has a big impact on the sound that comes out and that's why it's really easy even if it, even though you can still hear that it's computerized sound it's a very very accurate at creating the same frequencies that will come out and that's that's been very key in in, in, um, in exploring all these things so yes anyway, I'll yeah. turn it back to you <laughs> thank you no that's really important to explain because you know they really just take the model of a person you know it, and and he could just say, I'm taking a model of a female voice and I'm taking a model of a male voice. Like these are the measurements of the space and I can make these adjustments to the space. I can add whatever form of nasality I want and see what happens there. For me as, as a singer, like the, the main issue when I want to do a study and I just go and check my voice in whatever spectrum analyze out there, no one can really know that I'm doing what I think I'm doing, you know? I, I could be thinking that I'm doing nasal resonance, but maybe I'm not. <laughs> I could be thinking that I'm doing twang, but maybe I'm doing more whatever, you know? It's just, there are so many things that are hidden in this instrument that we can't know for sure or make a legitimate study by saying, this might happen, you know, or I feel that this happens. And that's the other thing is that, Nasality, um, a lot of times when we sing, we feel vibrations, right? We feel vibrations and a lot of singers, I tell them, okay, what did you feel now? Because I feel like they're doing something really good. Could be twang, could be ring, could be whatever, you know? Could be belting, I'll, I'll throw terms, but it doesn't really matter. They were doing something good, okay? And, and then I ask them, what do you feel? And then they might say, I'm feeling vibrations here in, in the area of my nose and I'll be okay if that's what you're feeling that's what we're going for but it doesn't mean that that sound was nasal it doesn't mean that they use nasality 
because the vibrations could be coming from um, the ceiling of my mouth um, into you know, my skeleton and other stuff <laughs> happening in there and it's just vibration leading to vibrations and I'm feeling them here, but that's not an indication that that was exactly what I'm doing. Right, just, it doesn't you know? mean that that's, a, that just because I feel something some way doesn't mean that Ahmad is going to feel the exact same thing and even if she did feel the same thing, it doesn't mean that we're doing the same thing. So perspective, perception of our feelings as singers is really important and I think it's great you ask singers that and we should as as singers out there ask yourself when it's feeling right when you when you get the sound that you want you hear it on the recording your coach is saying that's it really think about what does it feel like to you because it may be different than what it feels like to other people but if you can associate that sound with what you personally feel you'll be able to reproduce it and then you'll have something that then your body will go, that's that, that's the feeling. So then you can, you can use that as, as a directional guide. Yeah. So I'm glad you said that, you know, just what we feel is not necessarily what's going on. It's like, you know, we, Ahmad and I go to the beach and then we come home and the next day we tell a friend what our experience at the beach, it's going to be different. Yep. because we have a different perception we might not even think the uh, the water had the same color because of our perception but so our perception and reality are slight they're not really in sync and the yeah. same thing with singing so it's, it's a lot of fun to delve into that topic but i want to get us back on track because yes. i want to yes. hear what you found <laughs> in your study with yeah okay so so i'm getting there so so it, basically vibrations could come from anywhere and so that's why we wanted to really have that those computer models just showing us what could potentially happen so what i did and you can all try it with me i said first of all i want to use only nasal sound so i want to use an ng you know simple concept i want to use an ng because i want to see what happens when i do something that's completely nasal but at the same time, I change the outlet. So my, the, the, the idea was, my thinking was, my theory is that we can control the muscles of the nostrils, what we call the nares muscles. And those are the muscles that you use when you dive into a pool, for example, okay? And you wanna hold your air. So just imagine you're going into a pool and you're going, and then you can feel something happening here because you don't want water to just coming to your nose, right? Same thing happens when you go into, you're going on like, I don't know, a main street or something and you're passing a garbage can that's really, really stinky. And, and then you're going, you know, or you're holding your breath a little bit because you don't want to smell it. So when I talked about it with, with Brad, we called it the eek. <laughs> The eek <laughs> was basically us, you know, compressing our nostrils a little bit. And, and I had images, I found images of both Beyonce and both uh, Mariah Callas, you know, classical and, and pop. You can find images of singers going into high notes and doing like a, ah, ah, like they're doing that. So I, I, you know, I was thinking someone has to study that and figure out what is it that they're doing if they're doing you know <laughs> anything in there so we did the angie and then what i want you to do is just really relax your nostrils and everything is calm and um and then you're just doing like a mm, like a really really calm and and you feel the flow coming out of your nose you know it's just a regular angie and then do the same angie when you feel like there's an eek, you know, when you do the eek. So, so you do a mm, and then you do a, mm, and something changes, right? And so this is a really beneficial tool. First of all, you might feel that um, it stops some of the air. Okay, you get, it's like when you use, and I keep holding the straw here. There's a very simple concept of when you use a straw, um, you limit the amount of air coming out of your mouth and then it creates a good feedback, you know, um, and affects your resonance or so your resonance is more active because less is just coming out. There's more happening inside. And I call that the, like the air dance, you know, there's a dance, there's a party inside your mouth. So when you're doing like a, 
there's a party inside your mouth. So when you're doing an Angie, <laughs> there's a party inside your nose because you're not letting all the people out. You're saying, you know, continue to party. And so in some sense, maybe part of it is coming back in this this is not proven by the way this is just another one of my theories but in in a sense maybe this just blocking the the outlet is also helping us get that better um vocal fold deduction okay so instead of doing like a we're doing it's already you know something's changing and some people may say that i were i was adding twang there possibly Maybe, I'm not saying I didn't, but I also changed um, the nasal resonance a little bit, okay? So I, when I was kind of working with different singers on it, I would tell them, can you give me twang to begin with? So you can try that as well, everyone. You can do like a twangy sound with the NG, okay? But really relax your nostrils. That might take a little bit of training to just go, mm, mm, like a twangy, but really flowy uh, sound from your nostrils and then do mm, then, mm, okay something changes again even if i started off with a twang so i was i was working with that and then we had the computer model do the same thing and basically brad designed the computer model so the outlet would be like the just closed and and and, and narrower by like by like 30%, you know, just like making sure it's not um, completely able to come out. And so when he did that, the results that I was showing on the spectrum and the results that he was showing were pretty similar. So that's when we, we knew we were on to something. Like that's not just a loony town in my head. <laughs> So, um, so so then we went the computer model and your sound as you did this engage this they were matching up yeah 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 and and so we did and then we we had this protocol where it's not just the ng right so we did the ng because that like shows us the completely nasal sound without any other interference but then we wanted to see the coupling the coupling of the vocal track um, and, and the mouth resonance with it. So then we did the same thing on ah, um, and, and really the models kept matching in different locations. And you can always see those extra resonances that just pop up in your screen. So if I had maybe like energy boost here and energy boost here, then all of a sudden there's another one here, <laughs> you know? And so that explains why those sounds are so helpful for us when we sing because we get a little bit more resonance. I saw a lot of things pop up in like really high up um, frequencies, like 8,000 Hertz sometimes, you know? Um, and that's really good because we know when we have those high resonances, there's something else to lean on. And just in general, like if I'm speaking, in, you know, in numbers again, and it's like, what, what are you talking about lady? Um, so, um, what I mean is your voice is has its resonance, just like any concert hall you go to is designed to have a, a, a certain resonator, right? Because you want the, the, the orchestra or whoever sings there to sound really good. You want them to resonate in the space and you want that to kind of echo to all the chairs in the, you know, in the place. So you measure it and you design it that way. In, in a sense, the, the nasal passage just, you know, adds some more places to echo in and resonate in. And, and that's what I'm basically saying when I'm saying like 8,000 hertz or stuff like that. I'm sure people here, you know, you've got a lot of really people who have done their path in science as well. So they, they really, you know, they know what this means. But for people who, you know, when I was just starting learning those stuff, I'll be like, what? <laughs> so it's always good to just make yeah, sure. That's that's really important. I mean, I it, I didn't know any. I had like the majority of my career was, you know, I'd already behind me when I even started learning this. And I'm like, what? Wow, that's amazing. So yeah, basically, 
every every sound is multi-layered spectrum of frequencies and basically as you were saying when you engage when you add that little bit of this nasality to that you add some additional frequencies which basically gives you a more resonant voice if yeah. that's trying something to more that. yeah yeah it's something more to lean on exactly and it's it's like when you go into your stage and you just do this balance and ask your sound man to can you give me up some more give me some more high frequencies in my sound or can you whatever you know all those guidance is just like you do that with your own your own resonators which is mm. super cool that's like that's what you know always blew my mind like i was i used to play with those spectrum analyzer for hours and it'll be like oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just checking what kind of impact it has. Um, but that, you know, doing that with Rad was really, it was, first of all, it was a huge honor because um, Brad's story is, is huge, like a huge scientist and has done so many things. Um, so I'm always thankful for him for giving me the opportunity to study this stuff. Um, and and then figuring out that you know i'm not just crazy and there is something about it um that gives us another aspect another way to control nasal resonance so you can allow some of the resonance to go into your nose you can allow your soft palate to drop a little bit it's, there's no shame in that <laughs> there are a lot of singers who have nasality in their sound and again if it's not overly done it can actually benefit you and you can control not only the soft palate, but also how you let the sound in and out. And, and if you're wondering how you can control the soft palate, because for many years I was taught not to use that guidance, not to use what we call kinesthetic awareness, like trying to activate a certain part of your, or a certain organ in your body, because it can be confusing, because it can cause tension, because, um, you know, million reasons, like I don't need to get into it, but you definitely can learn to engage it just by allowing your soft palate to drop and be more lazy towards the NG, or you can yawn, or you can be surprised and feel like how it raises, you know, and you can control those locations and ju then just feel the difference between going, uh, which is nasal, to like being really surprised uh, and then I'm plugging my nose and nothing happens because that's majority of the sound is not going into my nose anymore. So yeah. So how do we, d how do we do, I mean, it's, it's great. I'm excited about this. It all, it's all making sense to me. I have a lot of background with and know a lot of different exercises and coaching with different styles and classical on, on exactly where you're talking about so getting some concrete things that line up on from the research side that's saying yes this exists this happens this we can do this adds this this is controllable that's really great so how do you help a singer to discover this would you have any exercises or or tricks that have been working for you and some of your clients yeah, so a lot of times, especially when we go through the passaggio, and I think a while ago, um, was I doing like a registers thing with you? I think I did. And yeah. then we had, we had someone who came in and, and I gave her an exercise, which was either with an M or an NG in it. And suddenly she felt like it was a little bit more smooth. Um, and then I, and, and I think I told her, it's also nasal, don't tell anyone, but it's really helping. <laughs> um, because, because then again, you get some more resonance to lean on, but you can also control some of the air coming out. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing that, someone does maybe like a ma 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 and their voice breaks, for example, right? So, and then you work with them on that M, um, you can actually put, that's a good one, let's do that. You can put your finger in front of your nostrils and just do an M where a lot of air is coming out of your nostrils. You're just like, mm, mm, mm. and sometimes students do that, you know, because that makes sense. It's a nasal sound. But now try doing that with as less air possible coming out of your nose. So like try to constrict it so there won't be too much air on your finger. 
mm, mm, mm. and then all of a sudden you get that m that has a bit more resistance in it and then you go into that mm, 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 and all of a sudden something changes you know and that and so again it helps you with the air regulation which is what we call sometimes support oh big word that we're all scared of because it means so many things all at once <laughs> But basically, it's just air regulation. You regulate the air coming out using this, but you also benefit some other resonances. Like you, you could hear the buzziness in my sound. So, you know, and, and, and anyone can argue that I wasn't just doing that. Again, I, maybe I was adding twang and other stuff. I'm not arguing with that. I'm not saying that's not the case. But using that concept of the eek clearly does something in multiple levels and we have shown that it does something in the nasal resonance level specifically as well so um there are further studies to do i'm not saying that's the entire truth but you can use that you can use that and try it and and i feel like that's you know as going back to what we started with just exploring and having fun with it and like saying that actually works for me that doesn't work for me and be yeah. really careful but when you're doing that just make sure that the eek doesn't make you squeeze too hard. That's the one thing I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree that when you when you're playing with these, the ng, the n, the nasal nasal consonants, again, great dis, uh, great explanation why it's called a nasal consonant, right? Um, mm, mm, it's because it's blocking off the airway, and the only way out is through the nose, right? So all of these things, if you're doing them and you put too much pressure, you will fatigue your voice really quickly, especially like an eek. If you, if you push too hard in there, you're going to tire out your voice. So in my experience, looking for the vibration and getting it, you know, vibrating and ringy, play with the air, it's not a high volume exercise. Okay, you might it might translate to increasing your volume level in your singing, but when you're practicing it, don't put on too much pressure. It'll tire out your voice real, real quick. It's really just easy, like you said. Right, and then it's so I didn't really change the pressure on my voice. So that be careful with that. That's the only thing that I see happening and um, that can tire you out. And I've experienced that myself as a singer when I first. <laughs> got these kind of exercises and I'm like, oh, I got to try them out. Oh, this is great. I'm going to go for it. And then I was like totally wiped out for the rest of the day. <laughs> I like to say with the NG, I like, I like your description really well too. You've got the NG with an air coming through your nose. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So play with that amount of air coming through the nose. And then I, I like to get people to go for the yin yang rather mm. than song young because the, right. mm, mm, the other ng is like really far back and that's really yeah. not going to be helpful oh i've got a good tip on that that's i'm really glad you mentioned that that's so important because the e you know it takes your tongue forward and the thing that happens as you've seen in the in the picture before the the soft palate just goes down in in, and kind of massages your tongue in the back that's how the ng is created it's the back of the tongue playing with the soft palate. So when those two play nicely together, it's a lot of fun. But sometimes when we want to create that sound, we overdo it. And then and then it goes into that like tongue going way too far to the back and, and there's so much tension. And so when I instruct people or teach them how to do an NG, the first thing I do is, is to find, and that was like, when I realized that I was like, I've been doing NG wrong all my life. <laughs> um, so it's just like, so th that's why I really love your tip on the E. Um, but when you just go for a, uh, you know, like this relaxed tongue, like it's completely drooly, you know, there's like drool coming out of your mouth. And then you go into that. And once you found that, you try to say something like sing or an NG. Mm -hmm. And then allow the soft palate to be the one who's massaging the tongue and not the tongue reaching out to the soft palate. 
and sure. and that just kind of changes everything because then you feel like the and you're like oh my god my soft palate is moving you know it's it's just like <laughs> you well can also feel it. that was great when you when you were saying that i was doing that with you and i hope all the singers is doing that with you and you'll notice that actually the tongue wants to pull back a little bit so if you're feeling the tongue want to pull back that's that's a signal that your 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 ng is trying to get produced too deep too far yeah. back so see if it goes right it's it's not going to work yeah so yeah. if you feel it wanting to pull back a lot just try and get your tongue to relax try, for yeah that. Mm. Yeah, and and even see if you can create the ngang 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 thing with your tongue. I don't know if if people will see that. I'll try to really get close to the camera, without the tongue moving too much. So like, and that's you know instead of doing that's the tongue like doing push-ups. Just let your soft palate go. Instead of nga, 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 okay, and then and that's a crazy difference because then the soft palate is starting like to yeah, work. yeah. I like that. You're you're much, you're very good at that. I'm not as good. I have to practice myself because it, it, when you when you take away part of the movement that your body's used to doing, the body is like going wait wait. You know, it doesn't want to do it. <laughs> so it's like take away the movement of the front part of the tongue and get the back tongue, the soft palate, to start working together on their own. It's like doing. Na 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 na. Most most singers in the beginning cannot do that. You know they can't keep their mouth open and just have the tongue do the end. So all these yeah. little things are very helpful. So just just know you're getting you're you're training those two things to coordinate by themselves and taking away movement on something else. It might feel really weird in the beginning, but once you've got that, do it like five times and then go back, let it go, and let it move naturally, and you'll be in a much better spot. I really like that. I'm gonna use that too. Yay! <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, it's really. We're gonna wrap things up here. Time always flies, um, and I just want to say. So when when singers now I understand when when those opera singers tenors were telling each other put it in the nose, they weren't saying to sing nasal. No. Not at all. They were saying use the nasal that that bit of nasal even, resonance and, right back or, in there. Yeah. Or even even they were saying, um, feel that buzziness, feel that vibrations here. You know, they may yes. have not been saying we want it to be nasal. We just want the sound to resonate so well that you feel it here. And yeah. that's why when people direct it to a certain place, it's so confusing because maybe for them it felt like it was here. But sometimes I ask singers who did something really good and they're saying like, oh, I felt that. That was so good. And, I was, and I'll ask them, where did you feel that? How, what did you feel? And they'll be like, I felt it here, you know, and and then you're thinking, oh, no, but th th that's that's actually, you know, that's very individual for them. It was like a good massage here. Mm -hmm. Like there was no tension here. So everyone are allowed to feel different things. Um, and yeah, it's t whatever they meant there could have been a million different things. It's, right. It's so interesting. Right. Everybody, your, your own perception and feeling is going to be slightly different from everybody else. Yeah. Um, and Ilona, I saw I saw the question there. Ilona, Nasality and nasal resonance are the same thing. Yes, yeah, it's a great yeah. question because that for me they're definitely not the same thing. But the question I'll read it again for everybody that can't see it from Ilona Kaiko. Thanks for asking this question. Would you say that nasality is the same thing as singing with nasal resonance? Is it possible to sing with nasal resonance without the sound of being nasal? Oh, oh, okay, I got it. Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't read it through. So, yes. Yeah, so first of all, again, nasality could mean a very a variety of things for, to different professionals. But if you ask a speech language pathologist what is nasality, nasality means there's a lot of use of the nasal resonance. So there's a lot of nasality in the sound. That's what it means. You can definitely learn how to use nasality and control the amount of nasality in there by, you know, by by opening more space space in your mouth and in your in your throat by raising the soft palate by a little bit. So it's a little nasal, but it doesn't sound too nasal. 
you know um yeah. that's the concept we don't want you to sound too no. nasal that that wasn't the point of <laughs> yeah, it, you can i'll just do just a real quick example of my speaking voice so if i go completely na nasal this is like a nasal sound it's ex almost exclusively nasal right and if i plug my nose then i can't talk like that anymore if I just take it back a little bit, you still have nasal resonance active in the sound, but I can keep talking like that all day long with my nose plug. So you can check that if you want to check the balance. If you're too far in your nose, just plug your nose while you're singing. If it stops, you're like, okay, that was a little bit too far. Go back a little bit, you know? And for some reason, I have this melody in my mind, so I'm just gonna sing it for y'all, all right? Nasal, nasal resonance, with and without. We can't go on together with suspicious minds. That's like everything in the nose, right? And then we just take it back. We can't go on together with... And I'm going to do the eek. We can't go on together. So it's a very different sound. Yes. But I would say that I'm using nasal resonance. So that's for me. We, we can't go on. <laughs> There's, those are the extremes, and then you could take it all away too. Don't know why that song's in my head. Well, I'm so glad it was in your head. That was such a nice demonstration. <laughs> that's a good summary of everything we talked about. <laughs> so it's very, very beneficial. My tip, um, Aromat tip as well. Great, great tips, Aromat. Thank you for that. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try those out. And eek and. E or ew that's a great that's a great trick um and just be careful that you don't put too much you know we could say this for most things but it's not about pressure in the voice it's yeah. a lot more about internal shape and placement when you get yeah. the right shape it takes away the pressure and you won't need to press it because it will work and so be careful when you're training your um nasal resonance and using this not to put too much pressure on it or it will fatigue your voice very fast. Yes. <laughs> uh, cool. It. This has been so enlightening and so much fun. Um, so you got a, another question. If you don't mind staying a couple more minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, just to clarify. So every time you sing with nasal resonance, you have the nasal passage open a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if, if the nasal, nasal passage, you know, this is, I don't know. I don't know on this one. Um, I guess it really kind of, it really depends on how you define it, doesn't it? So if- Well, yeah, I mean, it's, so again, it's really important to, a lot of people say that um, twang mm. is nasal, right? Because right. it's so easy to find twang with a combination of twang and nasality together. For for example, when we when we imitate um, Janice from Friends, oh my God, Chandler Bing. <laughs> so that's twang with nasality, right? So if and that's a trick I always use with like choirs or groups. I love it because it's so much fun and you can immediately like the room fills up. So where everyone was were just singing a note um, and just going. Oh, just like very, you know, small and then, and then you go Janice and goes, ah, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and it's just so <laughs> horrible. And then it, you take that, oh my God, and you are maybe surprised, okay? <gasps> oh my God, you're still having that twang in there, but you've opened up and the soft palate has raised a little bit. Oh my God, Chandler Bing or ah. And then all of a sudden the sound is huge because you're benefiting from the twang, but you're also benefiting by not being too nasal. So, so you know, so it's, it's the combination yes. of the two. Thank you. That's actually, I just want to show this graphic. Okay. I love this graphic. One more time. So this is the soft palate and yeah. the soft palate can raise basically yeah. and, and, and block off this completely. Yeah. Yeah. So if, but f if we're if we're talking this that's why i say it depends on how you're defining if you're defining nasal resonance as everything vibrating up in the nose well almost nothing vibrates in the nose but if you look down here it says nasopharynx if you're defining nasal uh resonance as 
using this, getting more of the resonance uh, harmonic coupling to happen up in here, rather than blocking it off completely and just using down here, then then um, I think you can have nasal res resonance. For in my in my definition of activating this space, you can have it even even if it's closed. You see what I mean? Uh, well, I think yeah. Well, that that depends. That depends because we you know singers do open that a little bit, and if it shuts down completely the interesting thing um so i'm gonna throw another curveball in there but <laughs> yeah we're going deep um, we're going deep we're Hang going... On, people. <laughs> um so when you think about angie is only nasal right yeah and then you have the hyper nasal which is most of the sound is in the nose so i had the mm, uh, and most of the sound is in the nose and then i do the surprise thing so most of the sound is in my mouth now. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that doesn't mean I've blocked the the you know the entrance to the nose passage completely. Right. It doesn't mean I've completely blocked it. I still have some you know maneuvers there in how much I allow into the sound, and if I block it completely. There's a condition uh, in like speech uh, language pathologist. There's a um, there's a condition where they kind of diagnose people as as being hypo nasal, and hypo nasal means they their the passage to the nose is blocked so much that it all sound sounds muffled. So when you have a cold, mm. that's your sound like that yeah. because everything is completely blocked. So that's a problem on its own. We don't really want it to be completely blocked. And so if you try to do that, and that's that's always a hard thing for people to do. So I do that when I do like my teacher training stuff and I, I try to play with the position of the soft palate. Hyponasal is mostly something that you have like very big tonsils or whatever and everything is, you know, just completely muffled in there. Um, uh, but but it can also be created in a way. So if you yeah. if you go for a really surprised sound, relax your tongue. Don't do it with your tongue. But if you go from like that's that's the sound that I'm getting if I'm completely blocking the mm -hmm. entrance. So there's there's another aspect there. Um, and again, everything is arguable. I'm not, you know, right. whether the sound actually vibrates here or not. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We need to do MRIs. We need to check everything. Um, but but it's, it's just really, really interesting that the fact that we have different levels of using the soft palate and the sound will not be nasal because most of it is still in the mouth and throat. Right. But if we allow some of it, and if we do use the nasal resonance in the right amount, it's a good spice yeah. for the recipe. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. So it, it, yes, it does depend on how you, how you define it. So if, let's just say, for, for the this, this sake of our discussion and the sake of the questions, if this passageway is slightly open to any degree then we will be having nasal resonance yeah. and if it's completely blocked off then what well, you said hyponasal then there would be no nasal resonance so just to give it like maybe some borders to to that definition and i'll i'll uh and basically what i was saying is that i believe you can still use this resonator this portion of the resonator even though this is close, but mm -hmm. but for what we're talking about, nasal resonance, just saying, okay, if some air, if this is open at all to any degree, then we're including nasal resonance in our sound. I, I hope that clears it up. And it, like like I said, this is not the begin all end all definition by all means, just to give it some some um, guidance. But I think you can cultivate and should definitely be using this part of the re resonance chamber up in here in, in your singing. It is so valuable. Yeah. So valuable. Um, fantastic. I also, maybe just in one more quick question, Sarah 
in, on the YouTube chat wrote, um, are, you six, are you accessing overtones when using nasal resonance? Well, yeah, you know, um, so the overtones are there. And the question is, are you amplifying some of them? So when you're using just the throat and your mouth, you are amplifying some of the overtones um, in your voice. But then when you open the nasal passage, what we've seen in, in our study is that you are actually getting some more amplifications in different areas of your sound. So some of the overtones will suddenly pop because you had the coupling of not just the resonance of your mouth and throat, but all of a sudden another resonator came in and gave us some extra amplifications. And that was really interesting and, and useful. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. So short answer, yes, you're actually enhancing some overtones. And of course, as always, you're also dampening others. Yes. <laughs> um, this is another cool question from Janet in the on the YouTube chat. Is in, in the still modal uh, model, nasal twang and twang are practiced. Uh, yeah. So, or pres or they they differentiate. So right. I just wanted to say that we have different depending on your methodology. It, twang could be exclusively the narrowing of the epilarynx. Mm -hmm. there's, there's your vocal folds, and here's the the ep epiglottis. So narrowing the space right above where the sound ex exits epilarynx, that could be defined as twang. And in some methodologies, that is all they are meaning when they say twang. Yeah. And, and in um, others, they might say, this is one part of twang, this is another, narrowing up here is another part of twang. In my opinion, uh, I describe twang as narrowing all throughout the vocal tract because I think <laughs> it's really period. it's really difficult to separate. I mean, it takes training just to do one thing. And most singers are doing a combination of yeah. narrowing in the epilarynx, in the pharynx, in the nasal pharynx at the same time or to varying degrees to get their specific sound. So for me, yeah. I just define twang as a narrowing in the vocal tract. But depending on where you have trained and where your teacher may have trained, um, they might be very specific on the meanings of certain words. So just keep an open mind in yeah. looking at terminology and how this And lines. And I, I'll, I'll just add to that, that um, the Astil approach specifically was um, really good for me in separating twang from nasality. Like they had certain uh, exercises that I felt like, oh, okay, now I understand the, the difference. Um, and, and I think there's a, a paper um, that Ingo Tietze did uh, years back that was referring exactly to that, that like the difference between twang or what classical singers do that's not necessarily twang is that, you know, they really use the, the lowering of the epiglottis um, and the twang quality that we know from maybe country music or for something that's a little bit more uh, contemporary does include the constriction of the pharynx as well. So the back wall and and so yeah, it's all very interesting and and <laughs> yeah, a whole other topic. But I'm stopping kind of myself. Broad. Yeah, we'll talk about and also Carrie Oberit has done a lot of um, a lot of research herself into looking into that. Hopefully she'll come on Voice Masters again. Um, had her on about almost two, about a year and a half ago. Yeah, um, she's amazing. But she's really great, and that's kind of her her area of speciality. So yeah. Uh, everything, every sound is where my course that I'm going to release in a few months, it's called sound design, because when you learn how to move these moving parts, you are the designer of your vocal sound. So much fun. Thank you so much, Aramat, for being here. I've got to go now to yeah. our, our course giveaway. <laughs> are you guys excited? So let's, let, I have to open this up here. Oops, that was the wrong button. So again, if you have been in the live stream in the private Zoom meeting with us together and you're still here, then you have you get a special reward. And I see that one person that is um, with us already has access to this course. So guess what? You guys have a one in four chance of winning a monthly free month access to my course airflow control. So what do I do? What do I how do I do this? I basically just go to Google 
All right, and last time it was kind of funny. I just did a random number. I type in random um, number number gener picker wheel, and it's kind of fun. And last time I just uh, put in one to four, and then I spin this wheel, and I'll show you how that works. And then you get a nice sound effect, okay? And I can see you <laughs> in 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 line here. So watch this; it's going to be kind of silly. But here we go. <laughs> Are you ready? So we're gonna spin the wheel to see who wins one month free access to airflow control. Here we go. Oh. Woohoo! I love we got the nice little music. Who's number four? Music <laughs> effect. Guess who number four is? It's Voigt. Shaviro. Raoult, yay! <laughs> so congratulations. How do you spell and pronounce his name correctly? Raoult, Raoult. Raoult. Raoult, <laughs> congratulations. Raoult, all you got to do is send me an email, okay? Get, put your email in the chat here and I will actually, you know, it's really fun. We'll just do that right now. Raoult, put your email in the chat and I'm going to go right on onto the course and I'm gonna give you immediate access to the course. How does that sound? Yay, how exciting. <laughs> so, here we oh go. Oh my gosh. Thank that you everyone. Thank you, Philip. That was that was amazing. It was so much fun. I'm so happy that someone won something <laughs> when I was here. <laughs> um, and I've seen yeah. all the thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you everyone for writing in. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna just, uh, you guys are all just gonna to have to wait. Because I see, I know Rot has has been uh, actually I'm very happy for him because he's been a, a loyal follower of Singing Revealed and all the voice masters for a very very long time. Um, so here we go, Rot. If you if you still have, I hope you still have your login. All right. So what I'm going to do is grant you an offer here, and it's called Airflow Control Membership. There you go. It is live. All you have to do is log into your Singing Revealed account. And if you don't know, just in case, I'm going to send you a password. You might still have it, but I've just sent you a new password in case you haven't logged in for a while and need some help. Congratulations, Rote. You just have one one month free access, and that qualifies you to come to the course owner's master class. So I'll mm -hmm. see you hopefully in the master class as well. You guys have a wonderful day. Uh, thank you so much, Aramat, for this very stimulating discussion today. And uh, as always, great pleasure having you on. Ah, such a pleasure. Thank you, Philip. I love everything you do and thank you for everything you're doing for singers. And it's been a joy, as always, really. <laughs> Thanks, Aramat. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget to like, follow and subscribe. And please don't forget to give Aramat some love and follow her on social media as well. We'll post the links for you in the description of this live stream video, which will live on our YouTube channel.